Hey guys, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to recreate this ripped off face look. Now you don't need a face cast to create this look. I'm going to show you how you can make it out of a foam head you can buy at a craft store. Please don't forget to give the video a thumbs up if you like it. And if you recreate this look, please tag me on Instagram. I would love to see it. Now let's begin the tutorial. So I'm going to show you how to make a face prosthetic without having a face cast. You'll need cheap paint brushes you don't mind getting ruined by liquid latex, a paper plate, liquid latex, a styrofoam head, and a dog that won't get out of the way. You can buy a styrofoam head at any craft store or hair supply store. Use something to hold up your styrofoam head and keep it still. I used a mason jar and a Pantene Pro-V deep conditioner because that's what I had on hand to hold the styrofoam head up. So you're going to pour your liquid latex into the paper plate and pick it up using your paint brushes. I chose to use sponge brushes and you're going to start applying liquid latex to the foam head. Now you can apply the liquid latex in thin layers and build up the thickness of the mask that way. But when you're just getting used to using liquid latex, I feel like doing it this way is tougher to get used to because when I first started using liquid latex to make prosthetics, I would apply the liquid latex in thin layers and I would always find my brush getting stuck to the previous layer, which then in turn messed up my entire prosthetic and it would just turn into a big wad of liquid latex because liquid latex likes to stick to liquid latex. So when you have liquid latex on your brush and then you apply that on top of the liquid latex it, that's already dry, it just kind of sticks. So I just prefer to apply a thick layer of liquid latex and wait the extra time for it to dry and I feel like it comes out better looking this way as well. And you can always use a blow dryer to help speed up the drying process or you can wait for the liquid latex to dry on its own. All you have to do is touch it and and if your finger like basically makes the mask sink inward, it's not dry all the way through. I decided to make my face mask look like it was melting because I wanted to go with that look for the face, like it melted off. But eventually when I started doing the makeup, I got rid of that idea. So if you're wondering why I'm kind of like making a drip and adding like edges around the face and on top of the face, it was because I was going with a melting idea at first. The styrofoam's lips were too thin for me, so I used toilet paper to help create more plumpy looking lips. Just roll the toilet paper into snake shapes, apply that on top of the mask, then add another layer of liquid latex over the toilet paper. It's best to do this once you've got the base of the mask done. If you apply the tissue directly to the styrofoam head, you're going to have a harder time getting the mask off of the styrofoam without ripping it. So you want to apply the first layer over the mask and then you apply the toilet paper on top of that and then more liquid latex over that. Once the latex is dry, it's time to peel off the mask. You're going to need a translucent powder. You're going to constantly be applying the powder to the mask as you peel it off. The reason the powder is so important is it because it stops the liquid latex from sticking to well the latex. Meaning if you just peel the mask off straight off of the styrofoam head without applying that powder, the mask will stick together and it would just be a ball of latex like I said earlier. Apply the powder all over the front of the mask first then constantly apply it behind the mask as you peel. I just peeled off half of the mask not all of it I applied the makeup first and then I peeled off the rest of it later. To get the mask to look more realistic apply the makeup you would normally use to the mask. This includes foundation to give the mask a more realistic skin tone, apply false eyelashes, create brows, and apply lipstick. You want to use creamy liquid makeup on top of the mask because powdered makeup doesn't really stick to it unless you apply it directly on top of the cream makeup before it dries. So I mainly used cream makeup, just a little bit of powder on the eyebrows to give it the shape that I wanted. So for instance, the eyeshadow for the eye. I didn't use eyeshadows, I used foundation. All the products I used will be listed down below. To create the brows and hair, I bought some inexpensive hair tracks at Sally's Beauty Supply. I cut the end off of some of the hair into very fine pieces to create the brows. What you're going to do is apply lash glue in your desired brow shape to the mask. Wait for the glue to become tacky and then you're going to sprinkle the hair onto the glue. Anything that doesn't stick you can blow away. So basically like when you apply glitter on top of glue and then you just blow the rest off, you're doing the same thing with the hair. You can apply each hair individually if you like so your brows look like more on point, but that'll take forever. So if you want to do that, go ahead and do that. I just decided to sprinkle it on and then blow the excess off. 
While the brows were drying, I shaded the inside of the nostrils to give the illusion of nostril hair because it looks more realistic and I was not about to apply hair inside of the nostrils because then it would just look like the mask had really hairy nostrils. Anyways, you're going to need something stronger than lash glue to attach a track of hair to the top of the mask. You can use either spirit gum or prosade. I used prosade because that's what I had on hand, but I prefer to use spirit gum. If you use spirit gum, wait for the spirit gum to become tacky before applying the track of hair to the mask. If you're using prosade, wait for the prosade to dry clear, then apply the track of hair. Apply some latex to where the mask and hair meets. This will make it look like the hair is coming out of the scalp. After that, I peeled off the rest of the mask, again powdering as I peeled the latex off. It is so important to powder as you go. I missed a little spot on the forehead and the latex stuck right there so it kind of looks like there is a dent in my mask and I was really annoyed with it but that's what happens if you're not slowly peeling and constantly powdering. I chose to use makeup that can be easily purchased at any Halloween store. I bought a prosthetic that makes it look like your eyes are gone, spirit gum to attach the prosthetic, and a full set of vampire teeth. You don't need to use these things, you can just use latex and tissue like the first version I did. First things first, take your prosthetic and outline it. There is no need to put liquid latex in this area if you're going to have a prosthetic over it. Use whatever you want to outline it. I used face paint only because that's what I had on hand. Now it's time to apply the teeth. You're going to be applying the teeth over your lips. You do not want your lips to be showing because your mask has lips, therefore you shouldn't have lips. Cut the vampire fangs off of the teeth. There's two ways you can apply them, either applying the spirit gum directly to the back of the teeth, waiting for the spirit gum to become tacky, then applying them over your lips that way, or you can apply the spirit gum to your skin, then apply the teeth on top of the spirit gum. Remember the spirit gum must become tacky before applying the prosthetic, otherwise it won't stick it's just gonna fall off you can use a brush or your finger to tap the spirit gum and once you start feeling it become tacky it's ready to have the prosthetic applied over it time to give your skin that gross skin texture apply a thin layer of liquid latex on your skin you're gonna want to apply some around the teeth as well to help the teeth blend into the look once you've got some latex on your skin, apply ripped pieces of tissue on top of the skin. You gotta work kinda fast because latex dries quickly when you're applying it in thin layers. You can poke holes into the tissue to give your skin an even grosser appearance. Once you've got some tissue on your face, apply a layer of liquid latex on top of the tissues. You can use a cosmetic sponge to do this. Then use a small paintbrush to blend the edges of the tissue so it's a seamless line. A cosmetic sponge isn't good at blending the edges of the tissue so you want a smaller brush. You can layer the tissue to get your desired skin shape and thickness. I ended up outlining around my face to go with the whole melting look but I ended up skipping that like I said and I just wanted to tell you guys that so you aren't all wondering why all of a sudden I have red paint around the face. You're going to apply the latex and tissue anywhere you see fit. Remember, if you get liquid latex in your hair, it isn't fun, it will pull your hair out, so don't apply liquid latex on your hair or eyebrows. I applied it to my forehead, but I made sure I didn't apply any near my hairline. I'm just going to apply makeup to that area to cover it all up. It's time to color the tissue. As the base color for your makeup, use a red cream paint. You can find cream or grease red paints at any Halloween store or places that carry Halloween makeup like Walmart or Target. You don't need to make sure every area of tissue is covered in red paint. A little bit of the latex color popping through makes it look more realistic. Now use a darker red cream paint to define the flesh. You don't apply it all over the face, just randomly here and there. This adds more texture to the skin and creates depth. It's time to apply the eye prosthetics. I chose to apply them after doing the mouth and forehead because, well, it's easier to see without the black netting over your eyes. You can apply them the exact same way as you applied the teeth. Apply your spirit gum, wait for it to become tacky, then place the prosthetic onto your skin. To blend the prosthetic in with the rest of the makeup, you do the exact same thing as you did before. Apply latex over the prosthetic, then apply tissue over the latex, add another layer of latex, so on and so forth. 
Around the nose, you want to build up the tissue again to get that nose bone. So you want to build it up a little bit more than the rest of the face. Don't apply latex on the tip of your nose though. Just paint that makeup with the cream paint. It looks more realistic like an actual skull. And on top of that, you don't have to be irritated by the liquid latex on your nose. And the entire night, you really, really want to scratch your nose, but you can't. To make the teeth appear creepier and blend in more with the look, apply yellow and brown paints to the teeth. Use the brown paints to help really define the gaps in the teeth. You can pre-paint the teeth before applying them to the skin. I didn't do this because I had no clue what I was going to do. That's pretty much how I do most of my videos. I know I want to do something and I just hit record and then from there I decide what I want to do, what I don't want to do, what I want to take off, what I want to leave. So yeah, that's kind of how I work. Time for the final step, blood! Okay, I'm using a gel blood to do this. The difference between a gel blood and the cheap vampire blood you can get from like the dollar store is the gel blood looks more realistic and it holds its shine better. It's more like a gel, obviously, than vampire blood, which is a runny liquid. Apply that blood randomly around the face. You don't want to apply it onto the entire face because you will take away from all the detailing and you're probably just going to end up looking like a bloody tampon zombie. So don't apply too much blood, but apply enough blood. Time for the final step. Blood! You get a blood! You get a blood! Everybody gets a blood! No. Anyways, I'm using a gel blood to do this. The difference between a gel blood and the cheap vampire blood you can get from like the dollar store or Walmart is a gel blood looks more realistic and it holds its shine better. It's more like a gel, obviously, than vampire blood, which is a runny liquid. Apply that blood randomly all around the face. You don't want to apply it onto the entire face because you will take away from all the detailing you just did with the cream paint and you're probably going to end up looking like a bloody tampon zombie. So don't apply too much blood, but apply enough. Hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial. I'm so proud of this look, especially since I've never been to like makeup school. So please give the video a thumbs up if you like it. Let's see if we can get this video to a thousand thumbs ups. I would be like so freaking ecstatic. Anyways, I'll see you guys in my next Halloween tutorial. Make sure you subscribe if you're not subscribed so you'll be notified when that video comes out. And I'll see you guys. Take care. Bye.